right, so welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and this lesson is dedicated to Nasir. Hopefully by the end of this, Nasir will have a better understanding of the scientific notation, what it means, how to use it, how to convert a number in what's considered expanded form to scientific notation, and how to convert a number that's in scientific notation back to expanded form. So we have four examples up here, and I'm gonna run through this pretty quickly, right? But we're gonna repeat the same steps over and over again, and then you'll be able to practice on your own in order to master this. Okay, so number one, we have 0 0.0021, okay? It's a very small number, all right? A very, very small decimal. I know that it's small because this two and this one are kind of far away from the decimal point, all right? So with scientific notation, I need to have two parts. I need to have a number that is between one and 10, right? Greater than one, but less than 10. It could be one, it can't be 10. It's gotta be one or greater and less than 10. And I also need an, another number that is a power of 10. Here's my first step. You see this decimal point right here? We have to move this decimal point around. We gotta move this decimal point until we create a number that is greater than one and less at the same time less than 10. So if I move this decimal point back to the left, that's still not a number that's between 1 and 10. But what if I move it to the right? If I go one space, 0 0.021 is still not greater than 1 and less than 10. If I go another space, 0.21, that's still not greater than 1 and less than 10. But if I go another space, now I got 2.1. Ah, question is, is 2.1 1 or greater? and also less than 10? It is. 2.1 is in between one and 10. Now, the next thing you write in scientific notation, you write a multiplication sign, the old school traditional multiplication sign, the X, all right? Then you write a 10. Now, the last thing you need to write is you need an exponent for the 10, because you need a number that's between one and 10, and then you need a power of 10. But what power should it be? The way you figure out what exponent 10 should have is you go back and you remember, wait, how many times did I move this decimal point over? How many spaces did I move it? Just go back and count how many spaces you moved it. It's just that simple. If you moved it one, two, three spaces, right? Then that means your exponent is going to be a three. But hold up though. Hold up. It's not going to be a positive three. Because remember, you got to think about what you would have to do to get back to the original number. So think of it like this. Put this in your notes. Move left. That's negative. Move right. That's positive. Put this in your notes and memorize that. So whenever you're converting numbers in expanded form to scientific notation, you first just count how many spaces did you move the decimal point? I moved three spaces. But if I move to the left, it's going to be negative. If I move to the right, it's going to be positive. No, you know what? This is wrong. This is wrong. If I move the decimal point to the right, then my exponent should be negative. Erase this. If you wrote this down, erase this. If you move it to the right, like we about to do, it should be negative. Always catch your mistakes. It's a mistake. Because look, one, two, three. I moved it to the right three spaces. When you move it to the right, the exponent should be negative. Because we are concerned about how to get back to the original number. How to get back to the original number. Now when we get to number three and number four, we're gonna show what happens when you already have this exponent, all right? Now, this is why this is correct. 2.1 is a number greater than one and less than 10. How did I get, how did I create 2.1? I picked up this decimal point and I slid it over to the right, three spaces, one, two, three. So my exponent is a three 
but it's a negative 3. Because in order to get back to the original number, I would have to go in the negative direction. So that's what I care about. What direction would I have to go to to get back to the original number? Or you could just memorize, and I promise you I have it correct this time. Remember, if you move to the left, right, then it's going to be a positive exponent. If you move the decimal point to the right, it's going to be a negative exponent. So left goes with positive, right goes with negative. That's what scientific notation. Usually, it's the other way around. Usually, when you move to the left, you're dealing with negative, and you move to the right, you're dealing with positive. But scientific notation is a little different. Let's go to the second example. This number is 5,430,000. All right? I'm about to put an arrow right there. So 5,430,000. That number is not between 1 and 10. So we want to put this number into scientific notation. So we want to create a number that's greater than 1 and less than 10. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, in number 1, there was a decimal point right there. In number 2, I don't see no decimal point. You're right. It's not. It's invisible. It's understood to be there. If you ever don't see a decimal point, just understand that it's at the end of the number. It's at the end of the number. If there ever, if you ever encounter a number that does not have a decimal point written, it's at the end of the number. Now, how do I create a number by sliding my decimal point? How do I create a number that's greater than 1 and less than 10? I go one space, still too large. I go one, another space, still too large. Another space, still too large. Another space, 543.000, which is just 543. That's still too large. I go again, 54.3, still too large. I go one more time, 5.43000, and you don't got to write the zeros. 5.43. That number is greater than 1 and less than 10. It's more than $1 and less than $10. $5.43. Is more than one dollar it's less than ten dollars so again first step create a number that is greater than one and less than ten by sliding the decimal point whether you need to move it to the right like in number one or whether you need to move it to the left like in number two 5.43 then you write your multiplication sign then you write your ten these two things will be in, the, in scientific notation at all times these don't require any thought at all you just need to memorize these this requires work and this exponent requires work. All right? So you got 5.43 times 10. And what's the exponent? Now, how many spaces did I move? That's first off. How many spaces did I move? I moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I moved 6 spaces to the left. Look at my key right here, my notes. When I move to the left, my exponent is positive. So that means that scientific notation of this number... Is 5.43 times 10 to the 6th. 5.43 times 10 to the 6th. And that should make sense because if I want to get back to this original number, 5,430,000, I would have to move the decimal point six spaces to the right. So positives, you know, positive numbers mean you move to the right. 10 to the 6th is the same thing as a million because that's six zeros. Six zeros is a million, like a million dollars, six zeros, right? 5.43 times a million is 5,430,000. All right? Now, number three. Now, we're switching up. Now, we're starting in scientific notation, and we're trying to go back to expanded form, like how we started out with number one and number two. Now, number three, what do we do? Seven times 10 to the seventh. This exponent seven means that you move the, the decimal point in this number to the right seven spaces. Now, again, I don't see a decimal point written here. That's fine because we understand that it's invisible. So just calmly put your decimal point right there, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this number right here, and then I'm, I see I have a positive 7. When I have a positive 7 and I'm already in scientific notation, that means I do move to the right. Positive means you move to the right. Uh-huh. It's the opposite when you're starting out and expanded and moving to scientific notation. But when you're starting out with scientific notation and you're trying to go to expanded form, you basically just follow the exponent. If the exponent is positive, you move the decimal point to the right in the positive direction, just like on the number line. Positive numbers are to the right. Negative numbers are to the left. So I move this decimal point seven spaces. 
I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now my decimal point is right here. Now what number is this? It looked crazy, right? You need placeholders every time you moved. And what numbers do we use for placeholders? Zeros. We use zeros for placeholders. So you put a zero next to the seven, put a zero next to that, 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 and zero next to that. We got seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Then I'm going to erase this under here. And now we're going to put your commas. You put a comma, start from the right, put a comma after every three digits. I got that. And I got that. And now I have 70 million. 70 million. Asada, you want to say hi? This video is for your cousin Nasir. Hello. That's what's up. So, 70 million. 7 times 10 to the 7th is 70 million. Okay? Now, let's go to number 4. Number 4, we have 8. Where's the decimal point at on 8? It's invisible. Just like it was in number 3. The decimal point here is invisible. So, we got that right there. Just put that right there. Now, this exponent right here tells me how many spaces I'm going to move the decimal point and in which direction I'm going to move the decimal point. This is a negative 3. So that means I'm going to move in the negative direction, just like on the number line. Negative numbers are to the left. Positive numbers are to the right. So I'm going to move this decimal point three spaces to the left. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go 1, and then I still got to go two more spaces. 2, 3. All right? Now, I'm going to rewrite this over here. I got two spaces, so I need, again, placeholders. Placeholders. The placeholder that we use is zero, right? So I got point zero zero eight, and that's the answer, point zero zero eight. I took my decimal point and moved it three spaces to the left because the exponent was negative three. Three spaces to the left, and I'm good. Now, some people might write this answer. They might say... 0 0.008 because they just want to make the number look neater. That's cool too. This zero in front does not really change the value of this number. It just makes it look what some people would say more sophisticated or nice and neater, right? But either of these is a good answer. That's a good answer and that's a good answer. And that's basically how you do problems with scientific notation. Whether you want to convert a number in expanded form or regular form into scientific notation, or you want to convert a number in scientific notation into expanded form. That's how you do it. Remember, if you're going from expanded form to scientific notation, remember that if you move to the left, your exponent is positive. If you move to the right, your exponent is negative. Remember that. Don't forget that. All right? Put that in your notes. So exponents... Positive if you move to the left, negative if you move to the right. But then down here, just follow the exponent. If it's already in scientific notation, you just follow the exponent. If your exponent is positive 7, then you're going to move 7 spaces to the right. Now, if there are no numbers there already, then you use what we call placeholders. Right? If there are numbers there already, like for here, in this case, there was already an 8 right here. So I moved one space, moved the decimal point to the other side of the 8. But then I still had to go two more spaces for a total of three spaces. So there are no numbers here. So I used the placeholders, zero and zero. Placeholders. And with that, you should be able to do any problem where you have to convert into scientific notation or from scientific notation. Remember, send your problems to the All This Math DM on Instagram, and your problems or your problem might make it to this board. Peace. Thanks for tuning in.